Hello everyone, welcome to another prediction of death battle. Yeah. So it's come to this. Yep. Frieza from Dragon Ball. Versus Megatron from Transformers. That's a, that's a matchup that has a lot of praise for some reason, and clearly two characters should not be there at goddamn all. I love Transformers. I like Dragon Ball. But similar to unwelcomed couples, they shouldn't be fighting each other at all. We kind of wanted to have Megatron to fight against Char. Or Phil Gax, for that matter. Fair enough. I could see him fighting against Phil Gax, but... We might look at this prediction over with already. So, which character do you want to do first? Well, I'm doing Megatron, so... I guess this means I'm going to be doing Frieza, then. Yep. Just and, cause... and if there's anything from the Transformers Wiki I'll pull, that'll be something important. So... Give me a minute. I'm going to be uh, searching Frieza on both the Dragon Ball Fan and Wiki, as well as... Uh... Oh, whoops, hang on. I'm on the fandom wiki. Here, it's the fandom wiki for Frieza. So, here. yeah. And Which one do you think they're going to let Frieza use in this fight? Because in the in Dragon Ball Z, he was shown to have four forms. That's Those are just the normal version of Frieza. Then you got okay. Super Frieza, which includes the golden form. I don't know if they're using black form, because... From what I've seen on the uh, Death Battle Wiki in the trivia section, I don't think they have... I don't think I've seen anything regarding Black Frieza. I've seen Gold yeah. Frieza. I've seen Golden Frieza, as well as Gold Megatron. Which, yes, that is an actual form. According to the Transformers Wiki, the Golden Power is a type of energy in the Precursor world. Which, Megatron... Drained the Golden Age's envoy to become Gold Megatron himself, promising to take Primus's place. He created the new Primus Vanguard of Megatrons. Wait, he took Primus' promises. He took Optimus Prime's promise. No, not Prime and Optimus Prime. Primus, the god of all Transformers. Oh. Essentially. Yeah. Oh, I I haven't really read any of the comics regarding Transformers. I know yeah, I know and I should things. also I should also uh, note that because we're G compositing G one, that's going to most likely involve not just the IDW but Marvel Comics as well as some of the Japanese media. Is IDW even canon to Transformers? Because I've heard that they kind of make some of the characters stronger. Than well, the regardless of what they wanted to do with me re with me reading the idw section on the versus wiki megatron the once evil leader of the decepticons is a master planner constantly a step ahead of any opponent even ahead of what he wants now preparing for anything he may want in the future recently megatron now later on in the idw storyline megatron does switch sides because he it's it's a complicated mess but Basically, he ended up realizing that he strayed too far from his goal, which was the liberation of all Cybertronians of equality and everything else. But, because him and Optimus got basically had different ideals, Megatron got obsessed with power. And it strayed him to lead to Civil War, thus creating the Decepticon faction. But, anyways... Recently, Megatron had a change of heart, realizing he'd become a monster, but his cold, cynical nature is a front he has struggled to keep up with, as he's quick to anger and quicker to excessive violence as his answer to any problem. Megatron's trying to change, but he spent such a long time leveling in violence, it may have been a lost cause from the start. Responsible for the deaths of 4.6 billion Cybertronians and over 900 million humans, many consider his change an effort of futility. That's the summary. Okay. So yeah, he eventually switched over to Autobot side because of that. 
So power and stats, literally he's high 6A, likely 5C, higher with or 13. High 6A, 5C, higher with full armor. Key base, key base and stealth bomber. Megatron is his name, obviously. Transformers, gender male. Yes, there is genders in Transformers, don't question it. <laughs> Anyways, well, over four million years old. The classification, Decepticon Commander, Gladiator, Miner, Autobot, Forged Constructed Cold Hybrid, 0.1 percenter. So yeah, that, those are just the tip of the iceberg here. So let's see, we got base and stealth bomber, pretty much... All the previous abilities, except for transformations for Stealth Bomber, including manip Energy Manipulation Transformation, turns into a B2 Spirit. If for those who don't know what a B2 Spirit looks like, it's one of these things. Oh. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's a Stealth Bomber. Flight, teleportation, Megatron has Space Bridge check. Bridge technology grafted into his body, meaning he could teleport anywhere in the known universe. It's got superhuman characteristics, physical characteristics. Type 1 and 2 Cybertron is constantly shrugged off wounds that should be deadly, such as a bisection or even worse. Like, for example, this comic panel right here. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, it shows Megatron is firing a laser to... Uh, who did he shoot at? That looked like a Galvatron, I'm presuming. Because Galvatron has a weird knack of time travel. He has vehicle mastery in organic physiology, type 2, enhanced senses, genius intelligence, weapon mastery, martial arts, transformation, size manipulation, preparation mastery, precognition... Social influencing, air manipulation, vibration manipulation, self sustenance types one and three, antimatter manipulation, force field creation, reactive power level, awakened power, regeneration low to mid, energy projection, statistics amplification with OR 13, durability negation resistance to acid manipulation. Megatron fell into an acid lake while injured and arose from it. A few minutes later, without further injury. Telepathy, so Wade was not able to read Megatron's mind. Magnetism, manipulation, fear manipulation, mind manipulation. Fire manipulation, heat manipulation. Ice manipulation, impossible absolute, absolute zero and radiation manipulation. Can survive uh. the cold vacuum of space, so... Considering that both Frieza and Megatron can do this... It's most likely not going to be, like, a negative factor here, either. Life manipulation, deconstruction, corrosion inducement, death manipulation, and air manipulation, vibration manipulation. Biological manipulation, disease manipulation, and poison manipulation. By virtue of his Cybertronium physiology. Attack potency's multi-continent level, likely moon level plus, higher with or 13, and higher with full armor. He's subsonic movement speed, massively faster than light. He has at least class M lifting strength, higher with or 13, on par with Optimus Prime. At least class M stronger than before, higher with full armor. Multi-continent level striking strength, likely moon level, plus higher with or 13. And higher with full armor. Durability continent, multi-continent level, moon level plus, higher with or 13. Stamina, nigh limitless. Range, extended melee range, several hundreds of meters with the fusion cannon and railgun. Planetary with the antimatter. Universal with portals and teleportation. So, base equipment. We got fusion cannon and energy mace. 
So, and with Stealth Bomber, he has a railgun. Megatron stated that the railgun could destroy an entire city without being fully charged. Seriously? Yeah. And he also has the armor, which, taken remote control of numerous Megatron guns aboard Omega, Megatron summoned them to him and combined them with them into a new armored mode. The armored mode greatly increases his damage output and durability, allowing him to defeat Decepticon. If you're wondering who the hell Decepticon is, it's, uh, that thing right here. That's the Decepticon? Yep. That thing looks like it came straight out of Neon Genesis, Evangelion, Pacific Rim, and the Doom universe combined. Yeah. <laughs> Intelligence extraordinary genius, capable of leading thousands of battlefronts simultaneously. Literally, or worse, Warhammer. Literally, another comic paddle just to show you. Megatron has shown to be a proficient writer and poet. Megatron plans for an eventuality on Earth. After Shockwave made his new body, he had his old body reconfigured into miniature versions of himself in gun form that mind controlled any user to, into acting like him. These miniature Megatrons could be called back to form a near indestructible armor that he used to fight the Decepticon. Later, after becoming an Autobot, Megatron spent months learning how to harness antimatter just in case Tarn found him. And weaknesses, none notable. Notable attacks and techniques, antimatter manipulation, force field creation, and large energy blasts and space, space bridging. And if you're wondering who the hell Tarn is, well... That's Tarn! Oh, huh. Well, isn't he a beast? Oh, yeah. So, Megatron has the power to draw antimatter form from a black hole via the portals on his insides. Megatron un unleashed the full power of the black hole's antimatter on Tarn and the DJD, slaughtering each and every one of them. Force field creation. After Autobot Trailbreaker died, Megatron took his force field generation and used them for himself. The force field is strong enough to survive a blast that would destroy half the planet. Damn. And at his peak, Megatron could release a large burst of energy strong enough to destroy the Decepticon. Space bridging in this body, Megatron could summon a space bridge that will allow him to travel anywhere in the universe. <laughs> oh yeah, that was Megatron, people. Of course, I could uh, read all the other stuff like the G1 cartoon and all that, but quite frankly, that's not worth the time. It's just pretty much the same damn character, just interpreted differently. So, um, uh, do I, uh, well... Of a Frieza or something? Might as well. Okay, let's see here. Where do I start? For those of you who's been living under a rock and don't know who Frieza is, Frieza is an all-powerful overlord from, of the Galactic Frieza army. He is, a, he is the mutant son of King Cold and the vilest of his race as he conquered at least 448 planets. Planet Fijia being among the worlds whose Frieza, who who races, whose races Frieza uh, drafts into his army. I'm reading this from the fan and wiki of Death Battle, by the way. Though his father warned him to never pick a fight with either Manjin Buu or Beerus, Frieza encountered the latter of the two. Did not bond or did bond over a mutual love of destruction. However, Frieza overstepped himself before the god of destruction and rightfully gets beaten. He later orders Frieza to destroy the planet, destroy planet Vegeta for him. Something he intended to do uh, anyway, out of fear of the awakening of a Super Saiyan. He accepts his, he accepts Beerus's order to wipe out the entire Saiyan race while covering up his deed to keep the loyalty of the few remaining Saiyans he keeps in his employ as a convenience. One being the Saiyan Prince Vegeta, keeping Vegeta alive despite his treacherous aspirations to overthrow him, proved beneficial to Frieza as he learned of the Dragon Balls and traveled to Planet Namek to use its 
Dragon Balls to become immortal, but overall failed. This resulted in Frieza's humiliating defeat by Goku after he became Super Saiyan. How, however, he did not die. Because, of course, Goku... This was the start of Goku doing Goku things. Once his father found him amongst what was left of Planet Namek after its destruction and after being hastily put back together with robotic parts and substituting for its miss missing limbs and a portion of his head, the, true tr the two traveled to Earth only to be defeated by Vegeta's son from the future, Trunks Briefs, being sent to hell, vowing brutal revenge on Goku and his friends. Oh yeah, by the way, Frieza used to have this mecha form once, but I don't, I don't think it did, any, it did anything. Yeah, it didn't. The mecha form didn't really do much. It only got it got clapped by Trunks. Yeah, Vegeta's offspring. Many years later, he was revived via the usage of Dragon of the Dragon Balls by his last remaining underlings. Underwent his first ever training regimen for four months, unlocking a portion of his true potential, surpassed Majin Buu, and achieved a brand new form that he had dubbed Golden Frieza. However. He made an error in judgment by not mastering the form before returning to Earth to, ex to exact his revenge, which resulted in his inevitable defeat at the hands of Goku and Vegeta, who both had awoken power enough to rival Frieza's. And for some reason, Goku thought it was a good idea to team up with Frieza. Which ironically worked, especially when they were fighting Jiren. Yeah, I'm guessing it was kind of a necessary evil because I feel like that there are some media that kind of does something like this, like Mass Effect Two, for example. Sure, you, sure the companions of your crew didn't like the idea of teaming up with Cerberus, but depending on how you play your Shepard, it's only a necessary evil, and you get to betray them at the end of the at the end of the game. Huh, kind of like how Infamous Two literally. Like, if you went with the... Quo, you're portraying... The, the Lava Lady. But if you go with the Lava Lady... To stop the beast, and Quo oh, betrays you. You betray Quo and... The the whole idea of conduits. <laughs> okay. talk, about a, talk about a fucking nightmare. Yeah. While in hell for the second time, he underwent mental training, learning how to properly control his key, thereby completing his golden form, dubbing the completed version Blue Golden Frieza. Although it's not any different, it's just his golden form, except they mess. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! What that happened? Scared me. What happened? A bird, just, a bird just flew to my window, and then it just flew away. <laughs> Uh, even the bird is not uh, not liking the idea of these two fighting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think so. <clears throat> While in hell for the second time, he underwent mental training, learning how to properly control his key, thereby completing his golden form, doubling the completed version true golden Frieza, powerful enough to ravage all things that lay before him, and delicate enough to not even stir up the water. He was later brought back 20, for 24 hours via Goku's suggestion to participate in the Tournament of Power, under the condition that he be revived again if he performs admirably. He was one of the very few to stay on the stage during the tournament, of, during the, tournament the whole 48 minutes. Really? 48 minutes? Yeah. Where even the likes of Vegeta and Gohan were knocked off, albeit the latter was knocked off by Frieza himself at Gohan's request after catching Dispo, a combatant from Universe 11, in a stranglehold. Let's see here. He, he, Frieza is a, Freezer is of a race that can survive the, in the vacuum of outer space, and whose transformation sequence restricts their full power. He, as he initially appeared in his first suppressed form, Frieza has a power level of 530,000 which he assumes in his second form, which bears resemblance to his father, Frieza power jump, Frieza's power jumps to more than a million, and even more when he assumes his reptilian form, third form. I feel like Ridley Scott's going to sue somebody. In his true form, Frieza has a power level of 120 million at full power, but rarely uses this unless pushed to his limits while slightly bulking. Do they even use power levels in Dragon Ball anymore? Because I find that hard to believe anymore. Nope, that power levels are redundant. 
and in Dragon Ball, not to mention, Frieza later came back, had Broly on his side, Broly ended up getting sent back to Planet Fapa, and it's it's a complicated mess, and then Frieza later on got the Black Form! Which and I, I can agree with. There's one thing I can agree with DBZA, Freeze, and Vegeta that power levels are bullshit. And let's just say I don't like the name Black Freezer because it sounds like you're calling someone the worst term possible. So what are you yeah. calling Obsidian Freeze? See, that's why I call him Obsidian Freezer. Like, it rings off the tongue just like Golden Freezer does. But when Frieza underwent intense training for four months to unlock his dormant and true potential power, he gained the ability to transform into a gold-armored version of himself. This increases Vegeta's power to extremes that he surpasses Goku and Vegeta in their Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan forms, or Super Saiyan Blue. Which I find that hard to believe, honestly. But as Frieza only recently gained the ability, he could he originally could not maintain his ultimate form as it was very taxing on his stamina and power. But Frieza learned to maintain the form by, while in hell, perfecting his key control as to not constantly drain energy while using the form. At first I thought the hell in Dragon Ball was supposed to be some kind of like uh, demonic uh, torture land, but it was just some kind of happy place for the infinite losers. Yeah. Yes, that's what we call that. Hiffle. Of course, like I said, he did have a mecha form, but like I, but like what Storm said, it didn't do shit. There is, there is a lot of feats that I can go on, but any of these feats that he did were only in his second, were only in the previous forms in his current state. I don't know if I should get into these. I mean, you can. But... I should get it over with anyway. Being a prodigy, Frieza was ultimately recognized as one of the most powerful warriors in the universe, despite having never trained himself. It was when he did that Frieza reached higher levels of power, presumably orchestrated numerous other genocides, and killed many prior victims. In his first form, he destroyed Planet Vegeta and numerous other worlds, with Earth and the last known planet he wiped out. Frieza destroying Planet Vegeta is calculated at around. Oh God! Uh, hang on. Let me just send in the picture in the chat. So yeah, the, the... hang on. While he's getting the picture, I can tell you a little bit of what Black Frieza was able to do. He in the manga. For Super, he was able to somehow one-shot both Ultra Instinct Goku and Ultra Ego Vegeta. Do, do I don't know what to make of this. I don't know what to make of this number. Uh, let's see here, five three zero, and let's see here. What was the other? Okay, so one two three four five six seven. Okay, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, sixteen zeros. Okay, so five, three, zero, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Five, three, zero, three. Six, nine, twelve, and, fifteen. And let's calculate the five hundred and thirty quadrillion. That's a lot. <sighs> but yeah, like, like I said. Did they ever calculate fucking what how strong Black Frieza is outside of one shotting Ultra Instinct Goku and Ultra Ego Vegeta? No, no, they do not. It's never explained. There's a lot of there's a lot of feats in in, in the DB fan in that I can go on, but I'm just gonna send them in the chat. Yeah, it's just like.
So yeah, pretty much it's never explained on how Frieza was able to one-shot them. Or how strong Dark Black, or quote, Obsidian Frieza is. And I know, you Dragon Ball fans are going to be like, No, it's not, stop calling it the Obsidian Frieza. I'm going to call it Obsidian Frieza because I like the name better than Black Frieza. Stop crying. <laughs> Alright, I'm about to send the pictures in the chat only to... I just need to figure out uh, their minds. Here it is. Okay, Epitot King. Because well, of course, there are his flaws. He possesses prideful arrogance and stubborn refusal to accept defeat. He usually underestimates his opponents not going full power at the beginning of, of a match. But Andy despises training. Pre-ROF, he had never trained a day in his life. There, and for some reason... And there's the Black Frieza. And for, oh, continue. And for some reason, on the DB fan, I managed to find a picture of Frieza training. Nah. But let's see here. Far stronger than Golden Form, Frieza achieved this new state after training for about a decade in the hyperbolic time chamber on a planet that he, a planet he conquered. I forgot to go in, into his powers and stats. He's here is five five A in his first form, higher in his second, even higher in third. At least four C in his final form. At least four C with one hundred percent of his power. So uh, right now it's probably four C. And a there's a loss with one attack, effortlessly incapacitated, incapacitated go, Ultra Instinct Goku and Ultra Ego Vegeta. So yeah, how strong is it? It's never explained. Stop crying, Dragon Ball fans. <laughs> it's he also he's a skilled martial artist. He has enhanced senses, superhuman characteristics, key manipulation, key sensing, self sustenance, self sustenance, flight space, space flight, acrobatics, accelerated development, shockwaves generation. After image creation, paralysis inducement, power mimicry, telekinesis, explosion, body control, immortality, or something. He has regeneration. Cyberization, only one time. Resistance to extreme cold, cosmic radiation, and disease manipulation. His attack potency is somewhere between star, dwarf, dwarf star level to star level. And his speed is supersonic to FTL, FTL+. Plus. Massive FTL, Supersonic, and Massive FTL in combat. His lifting strength is unknown. He has the strength and strength of a Dwarf Star level, ranging into Small Star level into Star level. His dwarf Durability is also Dwarf Star level in his first form, that, but it can go higher to Star level. And he has Stamina of a Superhuman. His range is somewhere in Standard Melee range, at least Planetary with Key Blast and Attacks. He hit his standard equipment, his scooter, battle armor, and hover pod, which he doesn't even use. And his he has a gifted intelligence. However, there's also a pro problem with using Ki. Ki is very limited in Dragon Ball, depending on how long you use it, because it's only known to be using for Ki Blast, uh, cloning in one of the previous Dragon Ball shows, and being able to fly. You have to, like, make it... You have to, like, wait and... It's also a life force that the, that the characters use. Of course, Frieza can also mimic, manipulate his own key to make other abilities, like the Death Ball. He... He can gather his key in the shape of a sphere with a single fingertip and can create a giant energy field that can easily destroy planets. His expertise in this tech in the technique allows him to restrain it to instead put a planet on a timer towards destruction if he so pleases. Its most powerful variant is the supernova. 
Right. A massive sun-like sphere of energy that takes some time to charge but has immense power. Golden Frieza upgrade the technique this technique into the even more powerful Golden Death Ball. Then there's his Death Beam, the Death Cycle Bomb, the Death Saw, Death Wave, and Prisma Ball, and the Nova Strike. Wait a minute. Wasn't his Death Saucer the one that is went to K Krillin's uh, Kianzon, only to have him get cut in half? I really don't remember. It's been so long since I watched Dragon Ball. There's also his mutant hybrid phys physiology. But that's pretty much uh, all I have for Frieza. So, we've already gone over their stats and shit. So, what do oh. do? I don't think Frieza has this as even with the black form. Especially since I the fact Especially Didn't you want to call it Obsidian Frieza? I'll call it and for all the Dragon Ball purists who want to call it the black form. I'm gonna be dead serious. Even with that form, Frieza still has no chance. Especially since it's composited G1 Megatron with the IDW, with the marble, and with the Japanese media. This is going to be the most unfair fight imaginable. Like, Megatron has... Oh. And I should also mention the fucking refinery explosion that Optimus survived. How big was the explosion? Let's see here. Let's see here. Aha! Here it is! Taraxis! Mega Taraxis Refinery Explosion Recalc. Let's see here. 8.4145 E24 over 347. Okay, so. 8.8485.93 petatons of TNT. That is. high. Dang. So yeah, and it and Optimus and Megatron scales to Optimus. I don't understand the rivalry with each other. The fact okay. that they think this matchup has good connections, it doesn't. Like Megatron. Didn't want to come to Earth. Didn't I mean, come think to... about it. Okay. I mean, think about this. They do want to rule the galaxy with an iron fist. They're, they're also tyrannical uh, overlords that want to kill the main hero. But they end up teaming with them necessarily. And they both want to get stronger in order to defeat them. Yes. That's the connection. Here's the issue with that. Megatron doesn't want... To kill Optimus out of pure spite, like how Frieza wants to kill Goku. Like Megatron oh, wanted a caused a civil war. Frieza did not do that. Frieza just wanted pure destruction. So wait, why did he... why did Megatron want to keep Optimus alive, anyways? For the sake of uh, a fight, I guess, or something. Hang on, why does Megatron keep... Optimus alive? <sighs> okay, but does Megatron still care about... Optimus. It's giving me Transformers Prime, but since it is composite, I'm just going to mention it anyways. Uh, despite the animosity toward him, Megatron still considers Optimus an old friend and a worthy opponent. Hang on, give me a second. Hold on, he, kills, he still considers Optimus an old friend despite being evil. Keep an eye out for an Amazon package. Uh huh. I'm going to take a nap. Okay. Sorry, I was talking to Mom. Uh, oh, okay. All right. She was just asking me to keep an eye out for a package later. What? 
Okay. All right. Uh. But uh, yeah, it's just Megatron considers Optimus a worthy opponent. Remember, he was in the Gatorial mm -hmm. ring for some time, and he was also known as D16. He wasn't known as Megatron. Megatron ended up becoming that name sake the moment he got into politics to try to free his people from a corrupt government. But so he, because of... trying to free the from a corrupt... Yeah, but because of differences between Optimus' ideals and Megatron's ideals, it led to Civil War and thus we all... The Autobot and Decepticon faction we all know. And we all know where that hmm. leads. Megatron gets power hungry. Optimus tries to defend the Autobots from being extinguished. It's it's a story that's endless, as the very first yep. Transformers cartoon altogether, except for Beast Wars, because I think they were in hibernation during that point. Well, I, have you heard about the new uh, matchups for the Tournament of Champions? I'm battle? aware of the map. The tournament. Did you see the last one for week three? Yeah, I'm not too thrilled that they're compositing fucking evolution. Okay. But I'm okay. But they're but also I'm using live action. But I'm okay with the Street Fighter well. movie. Because the Street Fighter movie actually was fucking good. Sure, it was, a box, it was a box office flop, but it was it's it's basically a movie that's so bad it's good. Can't say the same for Dragon Ball Legends. That movie sucked ass. You mean Evolution? Dragon Ball Evolution. Dragon Ball Legends is the mobile game. Oh, whoops! I got the names confused. Yeah, Dragon Ball Evolution. No. But I can understand why they're doing a com a matchup with a composite version of Ryu versus Goku. They're not only going to use a live action one, but judging from, from the thumbnail, I'm guessing they're it's also... also using the Fortnite versions, which means they're going to also be using guns. That's not going to go well. Uh, it's going to get the one? it's going to get ridiculous if they do that one. To be fair, I would have wanted to see Sailor Moon versus Madoka. I, I'm i going to be okay with either option. I already knew Crew vs. Mega Mind was going to win the last one, mainly because of how massive the meme material it, it's got. Yeah. I want Lil Mac and e Makinuchi Ippo in Death Bell. I would have been cool if it was Zeus vs. Odin. Cause Odin. I, yeah, just, I, know I just heard the commission track for it, and it sounds godlike. I'm not gonna lie. I bet that the commission. I bet that the fight would have been cool because we had a mythology fight last season, and it would have been nice to have one next season. But hey, but, but at least we it. know that they're interested in doing these matchups. But some of whatever one wins, the other ones will probably happen at a later date. Yeah. You think the composite Ryu versus Go Goku is going to win this I week? I don't know. I would have to ask Nuke to look at the results just to see how bad the votes are. Will Nuke be part of the reaction in two weeks? I can ask him real quick. Action in two weeks. Also... By the way, I'm off topic. I'm actually creating an OC an infamous OC for my character named Ethan Cool, and his conduit powers involves water. Huh, neat. Yeah, I, I'm not, here's the thing. I'm trying to think of a weapon for Ethan, but I don't know which one exactly. Think about it. Each weapon that dealt, that the previous characters used for the powers kind of and match it as well. Take Cole, for example. He has an amp that conducts electricity. Dawson had a chain wrap for his smoke powers. Which weapon should Ethan use? It has to match... The style of it as well. Eh, who knows. But, uh, yeah, I already messaged Nuke. We'll see what's what. Um. If you heard that clinking sound, that was me accidentally slipping up, slipping a quarter on my hands. Ah. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, this matchup is about as bad as you might think it is. It's almost much. as bad as, uh, Omni Man versus Homelander. 
No, that one's enjoyable. Fair enough. See, uh, here's the thing with Curve Stop. That one is a controversial <laughs> episode. I really. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it I, is. Like, I don't think this a lot of Ben 10 fans were downright pissed. But I'm a Ben 10 fan, and I'm pissed too. I wasn't. I didn't have that same pissed reaction as other Ben 10 fans. I mean, yes, I'm a fan. It's just I grew up with Green Lantern just a tad bit more. Like Ben 10 was around high school years, middle school, high school years. I didn't get into that show until those years. Like I didn't. That's why I didn't have the same pissed off reaction as most of the Ben 10 community had. Would I love to see more aliens in that fight? Yes, yes, I would have. But at least they they treated Ben 10 right in the in DBX for against Phantom. But here's the thing: we all know DC. DC is busted to begin with, except some characters. Except a few entries, like Batwoman, Batman, Black Adam. You mean Batgirl, not Batwoman? They're two different characters. Batgirl Fine. got Sorry, clapped Black by Spider Gwen because it was basically Spider Man versus Batman all over again. Uh, do you think they're gonna do Felicia versus Catwoman in the future? Eh, who knows? Who knows? Wait, what was Felicia the uh, alias again? Black Cat again? Was it Black Cat? Yeah, Black Cat. Yeah. Black Cat is Felicia. Not Felicia from Darkstalkers. Yeah, not to confuse the Darkstalkers character. I know she's a cat, but goddamn. Funny enough, I actually saw a community post of Frieza matching up with another character from Darkstalkers, but I forgot his name. It would have been nice. I could I could have loved oh. that. We could have had another it's, Darkstalkers his character. Body color was, his body color was yellow or or an orange yellow color. I couldn't make it. Who knows? I, but I forgot the name of Let me st So far he hasn't messaged me back yet, but uh I guess we can wait uh, for the prediction in two weeks. Well, uh, the reaction in two weeks, yeah. <laughs> I'm... Thank you so much for having me on your prediction. I'll see you in the reaction. Until then, see you next time. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. It's. As John Tron would put it, this was a mistake! Yeah, this, this matchup was a mistake. And it is a one sided mistake. Realizing that Megatron is going to clap Frieza, and if they make Frieza win, you better make him fight like hell. I will be watching this fight like a goddamn hawk. So yeah, that 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 sums up the, uh, the prediction. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, I will be back later for some Kingdom Hearts. Um. So till then, your Captain Hedge, we sign it off. I'll see you in the next stream. So good day, people.